Hey there, and welcome to this review of the Flight. This is their Diana Soundwave Concert Scale Ukulele, and this is the full Uke Guide review. So it is a long, lengthy review. If you want a shorter review, you can check out the one-minute ukulele review where I look at just a few positives and negatives about the instrument. Otherwise, you can check out the chapters below and jump to parts of this review that matter to you, or you can look in the description below and also click to the different parts of the video there. Now, I just want to talk a little bit about this instrument and talk about how I got it, so that that's all out in the open. For about the last six months or so, I've been working with and for flight at various times. I consult them in educational matters, and I also do some technical writing for the company. So as a result, I am able to purchase instruments at a discount, basically at a dealer price, and I do, again, work with and for the company. So with that in mind, um, keep that in mind as I review this instrument. You might want to look to see if there are other reviews to make sure that what I'm saying is on the up and up and not influenced at all with my work with Flight. Incidentally, Flight doesn't tell me what I can say, what I can't say. It doesn't tell me whether I can or cannot review any instrument. They don't tell me what to say. And I actually don't even share what I'm going to say or, incidentally, what I'm going to say about any other ukulele with Flight. Again, they can see the end result just like you can in every one of these reviews. So I am sort of still acting independently but just so you know, with my connections with Flight, um, I do at the very least have very, very positive feelings towards this brand as I do some others. So just as you know uh, about this instrument. So that's how I got it. I bought it at a discount and it was sent to me from the distributor. And again, I do receive a discount because I work with and for the company. So that's how I got a hold of this one. And this is really... Uh, one of a couple ukuleles that made a big splash, not even the concert version. I think the concert version came out a little bit later, but two ukuleles really made a big splash at NAM last year before COVID hit and shut down everything. And that was the Lava U, which has been reviewed on this channel, as well as the Soundwave models by Flight. Now, the technology has been around for a little while, and ultimately it is made by the company called Double. And almost everybody that has this sort of package um, has that same general system that was created by Double. But then to make sure that you have it installed in your ukuleles and everybody's allowed to sort of rebrand to their own definition of what that is, the application is very different. And this is my first wood ukulele with that installed. You can buy the Flight Soundwave system separately and install it in just about any ukulele. Uh, you have to make sure that you can carve out a hole on the side and so forth. Uke Republic installed a sound wave on the Flight Mustang, which is their all-solid Acacia tenor model. So it can be done. It can be done on any ukulele, and Flight actually makes it possible for that to happen. Um, just for the record, Leolani also carries some ukuleles with a similar system. It's connected a little differently, but that's okay. Um, but again, made by Double. So Leolani has a system and they also sell it independently too. So just so that that's knowledge out there. However, most of the sound wave systems or um, sort of this transacoustic or whatever you want to call it, Acoustic Plus, I think is another company. Um, whatever you're going to call that system, a lot of them are going into plastic slash carbon fiber ukuleles and they're not going into wood ukuleles. And I think that's kind of... Um, it's not a bad thing, but it's plastic is not working as well as a resonator. So I'll just tell you right off the bat is that this instrument with, again, it's laminate walnut back and sides with a cedar top, solid cedar top. The laminate wood at the very least acts as a better driver for the sound, I think, than any plastic. And I'm pretty sure that you would feel the same if you played them uh, side by side. Eventually, I will do a comparison with the Lava, with the uh, Enya Nova, with this flight. Again, it's the concert model, and those others are concerts as well. And I am trying to reach out to Leilani to see if they will 
allow me to review one of their instruments at the same time because I'd love you to hear that sound spectrum of all those instruments on a comparison. So I'm hoping that's something that can work out in the future. We'll see if it works out. So we're going to take a look at this instrument. What we're going to do is we're going to first of all look at subjective issues. That's like just things like what do I think about it? Things like price which can go up and down depending on the world markets and so forth. Then we'll take a look at objective information or the specifications of this instrument. And then we'll come back to a summary and basically just again a, sub a subjective summary of my thoughts as well as an overall rating for this instrument. Let's start with the subjective issues. First of all, price. In the United States, these are selling for $399. Um, that is the price that is currently set by the distributor in the United States, which is Hal Leonard. And when I looked yesterday, there were some of these still in stock. However, the Diana Tenors are no longer available, and stock is up or down depending on how often shipments get ordered. And of course, shipments are delayed at this point because of COVID in our culture. So uh, what used to take a month or two months to get to the United States now can take three, four, or five months. So if this is an instrument that you're interested in, you might want to get on the phone and call your local dealer that carries it. First of all, maybe to ask them if they'd want to consider being a flight dealer because any dealer that carries Hal Leonard can order flight instruments. So, and that's, that's pretty much all of them, side note. But long story short is if you're interested, for example, in the tenor version of this, I would have your local dealer contact Hal Leonard and get in a sort of a pre-order or something, although it might be a while. You can also order them um, from, from Europe right now. And I think it's the music shop Europe where they're able to get them a little sooner. Again, $3.99 here in the United States. Now, in terms of the value of what you're getting, you're getting really a very well sorted out instrument at a really good price. I believe the standard price of the Flight Diana concert is $249. That's the list price at Hell Leonard. So it's a solid cedar top with a walnut laminate back and sides. And you get on, on the Princess series, or at least this model of the Princess series, you get Worth Brown strings, which is definitely an upgrade over what you would normally get. That's a premium string. And you get Flight's gig bag. Now, I've had some people uh, leave video comments, and when I talk about this gig bag, and they say, well, such and such is a better gig bag. But almost always, it's, in fact, every time, it's not a, a gig bag that ships with an instrument. It is a gig bag that you buy separately and usually for quite a bit of money. Uh, Flight includes a wonderful deluxe gig bag. I think the padding is 15 millimeters on the Princess series and um, very, very plush interior, well cushioned, um, small pocket on the front, but not, you know, that's enough for what I need to carry it with. Two backpack straps and a nice cushioned handle if you've got to carry it around. Again, I really do think that it's one of the best bags in the industry, and I'm not just saying that because I do work with and for flight. So with that in mind, um, I really do like that bag a lot. So you get the bag, you get the instrument, you get the strings, and then for the $3.99 price point, you get the Soundwave system as well. And with all that together, you can find similar models like this when you get to this level, from Kala or Ohana, which are solid top with laminate back and sides. And you're going to find that in almost every head-to-head, -head, Flight is going to have a lower-priced item of equal or better quality at those price points. So ultimately, it is a very good value. The build quality is really flawless on this one. So one of the things I can tell you about this one is that it was just sent to me and nothing special was done to it. It wasn't sent to Luthier to have it checked before it was sent to me. And it is basically a flawless instrument. Um, some really nice touches are that it has a satin neck. So there are a lot of people that don't like gloss necks. So they complain about it all the time. You see it in the ukulele forums. So it has a satin neck, which um, the shape, and we'll get to the shape later with playability, is is my only negative about this instrument that would keep it from being my one and only ukulele. Otherwise, it is flawless on the outside. It is so well cleanly put together. The finish is 
excellent. It's incredibly well put together. Now, one of the things I like to do is I like to put a uh, really an endoscope inside the ukulele and see what's going on on the inside. I call it the UCAM, sometimes I'll call it ukulele diving. So let's take a look on the inside and see what we're seeing. Let's take a look at the inside of the Flight Diana CE Soundwave Concert Ukulele. This is made out of solid cedar and laminate walnut back and sides. So let's go in here and take a look and see what we've got. So there is our tail block and as you can see it has the jack connected to it. Up here, if we can get low enough, there's our bridge that does not run the entire length of the ukulele. In fact, the bridge stops with the slanted vertical braces. So there are three vertical braces going up and down. Just looking at the rest of the build of the ukulele here, it's pretty clean. Basically no glue mess whatsoever on this instrument. And you can see the laminate walnut back and sides, and then you can see the texture difference with the solid wood up here, if I can get enough of an angle without the, there we go. You can see the, the grain of the solid wood there. Now, over here is the sound wave unit, and we're just not gonna get a good picture of the inside of that. Now, you can also see right here is the speaker, that's the actuator, that makes the sound happen on the inside. So that's what vibrates giving you the effects on the inside of the ukulele using the ukulele's own acoustics to amplify that sound. All right, let's take a look at the upper bout of this instrument. All right, here we go. Taking a look at the upper bout. A little bit of glue there, nothing to worry about. There's your neck block right there. There's that support piece. And then right there is the controls for the sound wave unit as we kind of just scroll by it. All right, and that's a look at our Flight Diana Soundwave Concert Ukulele. All right, so we're back. Quite honestly, I don't see many builds cleaner than that when it comes to an ukulele. That's as good as anybody is doing in the industry right now. So very, very clean on the outside, very, very clean on the inside. Um, I like it a lot, it's well done. Now in terms of appearance, really, there are a lot of neat things happening here, but it also has a sense of traditional to it. Um, if you don't know, Kamaka makes a cedar top version of their instrument. I believe that's the Herb Oda version that they make of it. So, it, you know, cedar is used throughout the industry. I've had several cedar tops and I like them a lot. The one cedar that I had that I didn't fall in love in with was a Pono, but that was also overall a very heavy ukulele. It was gorgeous and it sounded great, but it was just really heavy and I never really bonded with it. However, I do have a mainland cedar baritone that I love and I really like this as well. So I do like cedar as a tone wood. It's not as bright. It has warmth. Um, it's it's really, for me, a, a very good tone wood for ukuleles that I'm interested in. So with that, you have a cedar top with a nice tight grain. That's, that's you know, to be expected, but at the same time, it's nice to see the quality. The laminate walnut. Now, laminate walnut can be good or can be pretty nasty looking. I love what they've done with the walnut pattern on this ukulele. And again, it's gonna be different, right? Because you're still dealing with a laminate with a thin layer of real walnut on the top, very thin, but you know, you've got that, that veneer and it is really well done. In fact, I think in some ways, this looks better than a lot of the laminate mahogany that I've seen that you get sort of that diamond effect as it's bent. You don't get that with the walnut. Now, I kind of sometimes wish that they had paired it with like an acacia, perhaps, a uh, little, little different color of wood. But again, as walnuts go, that is a walnut that I'm more than happy to live with. And as I tilt that around, you can see that you've got your rosette there, um, which is abalone. You can see that you have purfling here, white, I can't remember if it's white, black, white, what's well, black, white, black, purfling, 
and then it's got a binding of Paduk, and the Paduk binding also has a layer of purfling as well on it. It's got a layer of the Paduk on the back and down the uh, where the, the two halves meet of the laminate on the sides. So you get that beautiful red in there that works well with the cedar. Um, that red doesn't appear in the headstock anywhere. And you have a well done Flight F logo. I do like that. Uh, I think it's one of their three logos that Flight has used. And an attractive slotted headstock with rear facing tuners. The only couple of things that this ukulele doesn't have, for example, would be a cutaway. And it also doesn't have a side sound port. But the side sound port there would be kind of useless because you have the controls for the sound wave. So overall, it's a really attractive ukulele with quite a few appointments. It doesn't have every possible appointment, but it is really well done. And still, when you play it, you have the sense that you're playing sort of a classically influenced ukulele. And that's, that's really nice. Now, in terms of availability... It can depend on what's happening with shipments. I'm just going to say that they're available and that you can order one right now if you want to. Just remember that under COVID, shipments are slowed down a little bit and you are at the mercy of how often Hal Leonard, as a company, stocks and restocks their supply of ukuleles to send to distributors. Now, in terms of playability, let's talk about a few things. First of all, it has a little bit wider nut than many ukuleles and many concert ukuleles. It's towards 36 millimeters and the spacing of the strings is wider than most concert ukuleles. So you already kind of get a wider feel here and it's, it's not bad at all. I get very used to playing 35 millimeter nuts, but this is a little more spacious. Um, it has, along with that playability, a really good setup. The action at the first fret was 0.5 millimeters, which actually a little bit less than that, which is exactly what I'm looking for. And the action at the 12th fret is 2.5 millimeters. As I mentioned earlier, it does have a set neck, which many uh, very would kind of, you know, intense ukulele players would, would want. So it has that set neck, which feels nice in the hand. And the one negative for me of this instrument, and it's a really weak negative, but it's it's the case, is that it has a very traditional C shape. I would love to see the neck, you know, either uh, get smaller quicker, you know, have less of that sharp C angle and, and bring that in, sort of a reshaping of the neck a little bit. I think I would like that better, especially with the wider neck. I'd like you know, sort of a, a feeling of being a little thinner too. Now, I haven't done the studies on that, so I can't tell you whether perhaps this is the exact formula of a thickness of a neck that they need in order to sustain a slotted headstock. I, I don't know that, um, but that is my thought as I think about this instrument and what would make it better for me. And that's the only thing that make it better for me is I'd like a little thinner neck profile, especially on the top of the neck. Now, in terms of sound quality, as you heard at the beginning of this video, it's warm and it's balanced. It's not overly bright. And there is quite a bit of sustain. There it goes, which is what you'd expect with a solid top and a harmonic that I really hear popping out um, in the fifth. I'm playing a C chord, so it's on a G. Um, you know, an octave higher than here when I play. That's really popping out strong. So it's an instrument that really resonates well and um, is complementing itself with harmonics that come out with it. So I think, I think the sound of this is excellent. So this one is warm and balanced across the board. It's pretty loud. It's louder than some others that I played. Again, the extreme of this tends to be Koaloha, which tend to be the loudest of the ukuleles. And it's not that loud, but it is it is up there in loudness. And um, it's a very, very balanced sound. It's definitely not muddled, and it definitely comes across um, both plucked and strummed. Now, some of you are going to have interests about the sound wave. And for me, 
the sound wave is a bonus, not the primary reason why I buy the instrument. So when you turn on the controls, there's a pickup underneath the saddle that then gets processed and sent out on a speaker. So you, there are four different buttons and they're all in the exterior, which is really nice in this formation. There's a power button that turns green and I believe it changes other colors when the power gets low. To be honest, for the months that I've had this now, um, I'm still on the original charge and have not had to recharge it since initially charging it. So I'm assuming that's going to happen at some time because I have I have played this quite a bit, but so far we're still good. Now I have seen some complaints recently about people that say even when the volume is turned up, you get some feedback. And I would say to them, that's probably true. Um, this is not a system that you can crank up everything and not expect feedback. Um, and so just know that. And what's interesting is with the volume button in particular from this model, is that it turns freely to a point that's pretty comfortable and then I have to do some extra force not like to the point of breaking anything but I have to do some extra force to turn the volume up past that so if I'm just turning this knob for volume and I stop where I get the first resistance that tends to be a pretty good setting for volume for me so you've got the issue of reverb so um, here's without reverb. I'll just play the C chord. And already an amazing sound, but put on the reverb. And you can hear it. You can hear it louder than, for example, the Enyanova. You can hear it louder than the Lava U because of wood. I'm like 90% certain of that. Then you've got delay and the amount of delay that you choose will depend on how fast that goes you can hear how I'm getting just a touch of feedback at that point with the delay so then I bring the volume back just a touch and then there's a chorus mode and a chorus ultimately adds warmth to the sound but the way that my college professors actually my doctoral professors described it was chorus is what you do when you're imitating basically kind of the human voice by putting wrong pitches or just slightly off pitches amongst the right pitches. So you end up with what we call a chorus effect. It becomes a more full sound because it actually has more incorrect pitches in it. Um, that's That was how my doctoral professor described chorus. But here is the sound without chorus and a sound with chorus. So it kind of um, adds some more depth to the sound and some more waviness. So the cool part is that if you use the sound wave, if you externally amplify it, those same effects come out of the sound wave. So it eliminates the need for uh, a number of pedals. It eliminates the need for you to necessarily have a sound engineer. Now the one criticism I have for the sound wave is that I wish that the delay had notches as you turned it so that you could memorize how many notches you had to turn the delay to get the certain amount of delay that you wanted. With delay, it since it's a, a beat pattern time, it'd be nice if if there was a notch as you turned it to, to adjust that. So that's really the sound issue. It's really excellent sound. It really works very well. Um, can you hear the effects like at a campfire? Probably better than the Enyanova, better than the Lava U for sure. But it's still really, if you want to share the effects with others, it's still an issue of um, using the jack rather than this and the actuator inside, which is really meant, I think, for personal enjoyment rather than group enjoyment. So with that said, I like to use an app called Tonal Energy Tuner. And what I do is I play the C chord and I show you what I'm hearing in the sound. So it shows you, first of all, what happens when you strum the chord and then what frequencies are hanging on with the sustain of the instrument. So let's do that. All right, so here's the C chord.
So what you see happening there is you see that all sorts of frequencies are lit up across the spectrum as you play. So it really is a warm sound. It's covered from highs to lows. And then there is a good amount of sustain. One way or another, it is a wonderful sound. It's a warm and well-balanced sound. And it's a sound that I think you'd be happy either playing acoustically or plugged in through the sound wave system, also being able to add effects. All right, now that we've taken the time to look at all those subjective categories, let's take a look at the objective data for the instrument or the specifications. It is a concert instrument with a 15 inch right on the button scale length. It has 18 frets, 14 to the body. There are side position markers and of course front position markers with just that traditional dot scheme. The body style is a traditional double bout with a solid cedar top, laminated walnut, back and sides. The fretboard is purple wood, as is the bridge, and the bridge is a tie bar bridge. And one little extra thing I like about the bridge is it does have the little ABS strips there that will keep the wood from being damaged or dug into with string changes, as I see happens on some of my other ukuleles from time to time. It is not a radius fretboard. The nut and saddle are bone, and the saddle is compensated to allow for better intonation. The finish is gloss, has fingerprints all over it right now, with a satin neck. The overall length is 24 inches, and it weighs one pound, 7.5 ounces, even with the electronics in it. The tuner type are gold rear facing tuners. They're unbranded, they work very well. The action at the first fret was less than 0.5 millimeters, and the action of the 12th fret was 2.5 millimeters, dead on for what I'm interested in. The nut width is 35.83 millimeters, so basically 36 millimeters. The space between strings at the first fret, something else that I measure, was 9.54 millimeters between each string, which is wider than 35 millimeter nuts all the time. And the space between all the strings, G to A, at the first fret was 30.07 millimeters, which is pretty roomy for a concert. The depth of the neck at the third fret was 21.62 millimeters, which is really not that thick. That's about average. But again, with the neck, the one thing I'd love to see is for that profile to change a little bit. Maybe, again, to come down at a steeper angle to create a, a greater sense of thinness, especially at the upper part of the neck. All right, now that we've looked at the objective data, let's summarize the instrument. This again is the Flight Diana Soundwave Concert. It's part of their Princess series, and it's on the high end of the catalog of what Flight offers at this point. So the Princess series has a solid wood top with laminate back and sides. Some offer the Soundwave most, I believe, have a string upgrade, such as this one with the Worth Browns. And then you do have another layer at flight, which is called their Royal Series, which are all solid ukuleles. They're solid top and solid body as well. So it is on the higher end of flight's price point as well. So at $399, that's not a um, cheap purchase. This is not a $60 ukulele kit that you buy off of Amazon. So at $3.99, I think you would have a very hard time to find a better value on an instrument with these features than with any other vendor and still have it be a vendor that sells through traditional means. Example, your local music store can order a flight for you to buy and you're not necessarily having to buy from Amazon. If you're interested in buying these from ukulele specialists in the United States, for example, I know you can order these from Mims Ukes. I think you can order them from the Uke Republic. And I know, for example, in the UK, you can order flight through the Southern Ukulele Store and the Uke Room as a couple examples. So they are carried also by some of the fine ukulele dealers in the world if you want to go that way as well. So it makes it different than a traditional Amazon purchase. You're getting a great value from a traditional distribution method. Now, this cedar top, it looks great. The ukulele looks great. It sounds great. And the sound wave is really an added fun feature. 
I don't think it's necessarily the one reason to buy it. However, I think if you're going to invest in this and you think there's any chance you're going to plug in the instrument down the road, I think having that option of the sound wave is definitely worth the investment when you buy it. You could add it later, but why not get it at the price savings when you order it? So overall, it's it's really a winner of an instrument with or without the sound wave, and I would definitely recommend it to you. Now, what I do is I review ukuleles and I give them a rating between one and five ukuleles. Because this one sounds so good, because it looks so good, because it's put together so well, I would definitely give this ukulele five out of five as it comes to my scale. I think it's really good. Again, I only have one criticism at all of it, and that's a really minor discussion about the neck when, quite honestly, um, I put up with that neck shape from pretty much every other ukulele. But again, trying to be honest, that's the only thing that I would change about this ukulele. And if I was really that serious about it, I could probably take it to a luthier and have the neck custom worked on if I needed it to. So it is really a nice ukulele. So if you have any interest in this Soundwave model or the other Soundwave models, definitely check them out. They're a great value. It's a great feature on already great ukuleles. Thanks so much for joining me for this review. You can find the full Uke Guide review at ukestuff.info or ukeguide.info. And I hope you're having a great day, and I will be back soon with some more Uke stuff for you.